one of you being out here with us this morning. Uh, prayer requests before we get started. Keep Elvita in your prayers. She is in uh, Sepulpa now at the rehab, and uh, so keep lifting her up to the Lord in prayers. Uh, also, uh, uh, where else am I at here? Lost. Who? Any other prayer requests? <laughs> you help me out. Yes, Billy on the back row. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So keep her in your prayers, yes. <laughs> I ain't saying that <laughs> over live stream. She might be watching. <laughs> and uh, it'd be me that suffers. Yes. Amen. So this is keep lifting him up, Lord. Also, Lori Kinzer, uh, she had a surgery, emergency surgery here a couple weeks ago. Uh, but then her son yesterday had a seizure, and he's in the hospital. So keep all the Kinsers, if you would, in your prayers also. Anybody else? I think everybody else. Ruth got to come home. Margie's at home. And, um, and keep Susan Clark, Sue Clark, in your prayers. Kenosha's grandmother uh, still in there, so keep lifting her up to the Lord in prayer. Who else? Yes. He down this morning, or? Three days, so keep Robert in your prayers. Miss him up here at the band this morning. Anybody else? Let's pray. Dear my Father, thank you this day. Thank you, dear God, that we can celebrate and start off this, this holiday season, Christmas season, dear Lord, with honoring you. We lift these requests up to you that's been mentioned. We just pray in the name of Jesus that you touch. Uh, let them feel your presence through your spirit first, and then we pray you touch their bodies, bring them back to be with us. Go with us throughout this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Call to worship. He moved on me again. I was looking. Okay. Hallelujah. Man. I found out that before he blows that, if I'll take a real deep breath, it seems to help him out, okay? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's like when I'm feeding, I hate to admit this, Guess is 11 years old, but when I'm feeding him, I still go. <laughs> don't, don't tell his mom I still feed him. But anyway, all right, who's had a birthday in the past week? I know Stephanie and Donna both had one in the past week. See, I, wasn't, I messed up in early service, got scorned. Uh, yes, you've had one too, all right. All of you have been, uh, today is your birthday, all right. All right. Who else? Raymond had a birthday and wait on the next deal for that, okay? Uh, but it, this this is just for your birthday. Anybody else? All right. Let's sing happy birthday to all then. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Give them all a big hand. Amen. All right, now, who's had an anniversary? Brother Raymond. Yeah. Look at all the way back there. How many years, Raymond? 50 years. All right, man. <laughs> Bless your heart. Yeah. How many years? 20. Who else? How many? All right, Cormay, Leon, God bless you. How many? Fifty nine years. Praise the Lord. They go to she goes to church somewhere else, but every work day, every Bible study, everything, she's down here and we sure appreciate. Hun, do you have an anniversary too? Birthday. Okay. Who who else we got back? Charlie? You had an anniversary? How many years? She did. <laughs> How many? 27, all right, 40, man. 47. 47, I thought, wow, how old is Shonda? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Woo, it got hot up here all the time. <laughs> well, anybody else? 
Would you please sing happy anniversary to all those people? Happy anniversary. Give them all a big hand. <laughs> all right. Before we get on into the service, I want to say I thank all the ladies that helped out last Monday for uh, Margie's uh, funeral dinner. And, and uh, I know that was a lot, but I appreciate it. And then they turned right around after Thanksgiving and done for Roberts. And so we appreciate all you ladies that helped out. And you want to keep Robert, of course, went home to be with the Lord, but keep his family in your prayers. And uh, Margie's family, of course, remember them when you pray. And uh, Lonnie uh, Smith's dad went home to be with the Lord, so keep Lonnie and his family in your prayers too. All right, this time we're going to have our annual Hanging of the Greens. And uh, so we're just going to turn it over to them, and they're going to get it started. So y'all sing along, play along, we'll get it. We need readers one and two. Today we come together to prepare for the birthday of the King. Let our songs and symbols represent our personal dedication of the glory of God and the manifestation of his love through his son Jesus Christ. And together let us all recite John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <laughs> A formality there. <clears throat> the bright blood red poinsettia has become the most popular of all the Christmas flowers. The star of the leaf is said to represent the star that stood over the Christ child. The red flower represents the shed blood of Christ who came to be our Savior. Let's turn to page 122 and sing verses 1 and 3. Page 122.
The wreaths that are hung on the front doors and inside our sanctuary also have symbolic significance. Their endless circle reminds us of the endless love of God, and their green color, which is evergreen, reminds us that the new life that God gives to us will never die. Page 89, verse 1 and 3. 89. With the men of old, the arraying of greens in the home and some sacramental significance, as if the greens themselves carried with them blessings into the home. Our forefathers spoke of fetching hollow sprigs from the woods as bringing home Christmas. One thing is certain, the greenery had a purpose. It was never used merely because it was decorative. We should think of the greenery as a symbolic of the everlasting light given at Christmas signifying a blessing in both our homes and our churches. At this time of year, at, we as a congregation also remember the blood of Christ shed for our eternal life. For if it were not for the birth of, his, of this Christ child, there would be no remission for our sins. Right. Let's turn to page 85, verse 1 and 2. 85. Light is a perfect metaphor for Christ, the Son of God, and for his presence among us. Like the love of Christ, even the flame of the tiniest candle dispels darkness. But as one candle is joined by another, and then another, the light grows and spills over through the windows and the doorways to put to flight the darkness of the world beyond. 
In just this way, the love of Christ grows as we let his light shine through us into a sin-darkened world. We are each just a single flame, but together we can light up the world with his love. Page 95. The tree is an evergreen. It also symbolizes the everlasting life that God has provided for us through Christ. The most famous story about the early use of the evergreen tree at Christmas centers around Martin Luther. As the story goes, he walked through the forest one starry night with snow covering the ground, and he marveled at the beauty of the starlight as it shone upon the branches of the fir trees. When he tried to tell his family of the glory and beauty of the forest, they failed to comprehend what he had seen. He then brought a pine tree into the house and placed candles upon it to represent the twinkling of the stars. Page 93, verse 1 and 4, verse 93. <laughs> And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this was the taxing was first made when Cyrenius was the governor of Syria. 
and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went out up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Look at 91, verses 1, 3, and 4. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is to come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Let's turn to page 103. 103.
bells always carry a special special message they signal the gathering of people for worship they herald events of worldwide importance they announce weddings and most appropriately they proclaim the birth of royalty the joyful ringing of bells is indelibly associated with christmas reminiscent of the birth that changed the world for all time let's turn to page 87 and if you would please stand <laughs> and now may God creator of light and trees and flowers grant us peace as we have decorated this place of worship may we also live lives of worship decorated with God's forever things forever love forever life forever living forever growing forever green in Jesus' name, amen. Turn to page four, and this will be our offertory.
the song with Brother Rose. Roy used to sing quite a lot. I'm going to try to do him justice. Bright showers are watching the world as it sleeps. Shepherds are watching the little white sheep. The lighthouse is shining for ships far at sea. And God keep the night watch for you and for me. So sleep, sleep in peace and rest. Don't be afraid of the darkness. All's well far over the land. Well, God, keep the night watch for you and for me. So This is a song I wrote about 13 years ago when I was young. It's called Beneath the Savior's Wing. Meet me at the church on Sunday morning. We'll sing the songs we all love to sing. Meet me at the church Bring somebody with you And we'll spend some time beneath the Savior's wing Meet me at the church on Sunday morning We'll take the time to pass the time of day and If you get there early We'll talk about the weather how we've all been blessed from day to day So meet me at the church on Sunday morning We'll sing some songs to make those raptors ring Meet me at the church Bring somebody with you We'll spend some time beneath the Savior's wing When the preacher takes his place upon the pulpit And he said, let's bow our heads and let us pray There's something he's been trying to tell us And the Lord will tell him what he needs to say so meet me at the church on Sunday morning we'll sing those songs that we all love to sing meet me at the church bring somebody with you we'll spend some time beneath the Savior's wing it's peaceful at that church 
on Sunday morning where the only judge is God our precious King so we'll bow our heads and give our praise together cause we're filled with love beneath the Savior's wing yes we're filled with love beneath the Savior's wing Enjoy the hanging of the greens. Amen. Appreciate everybody that pitched in on that and made it run so smooth. <laughs> it wasn't that smooth the 9 o'clock service, I can tell you that straight up. Uh, you always get a practice in there with the 9 o'clock people, but we thank God for that. And it, you know, I couldn't help but think during the 9 o'clock service of Margie's usually the one that's trying to get all that together and everything, and we sure miss her and those that have gone on. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with us to Jeremiah the 17th chapter. Jeremiah the 17th chapter. We'll take our text today with the 7th verse, Jeremiah 17 and 7. You know, we're at that time of year when everything is is seemingly dying. The The grass, which that hadn't bothered me a bit, uh, you know, has and I even looked at some stuff the other day, and I thought, you know, now that it's dead, I might go ahead and weed eat that. You know, <laughs> might be easier, but uh, don't make those faces. Anyway, uh, but you know, as I was out just doing some things and feeding, and and uh, got in the midst of the trees, and and all the leaves is brown, everything just looks so ugly. But, you know, then I came to one deal as I was going through there, and there was one big evergreen tree. And, you know, it, it was just, just unreal as I sat there and looked at that, how that everything else around it has died off. But it's still just as pretty and green as it's been year-round. And I thought, you know, as Christians today, and as we've done this, and all the things that symbolizes this morning with decoration of the church, you know, we too should be like that evergreen tree. Year-round, we should stay in, and look, we, we end up living and climbing in a society that everybody's going green, you know. They talk about all the vehicles and everything going green. Well, I'll tell you what, my mules have been green for a long time. So, not worried about that kind of stuff. But when I say to you today, go green, I don't mean environmentally I'm talking about your walk with the Lord can you say amen you see the Bible tells us like a city that's set up on a hill so that all the world can see as I was going through the woods feeding and I seen all the stuff that was so dead and dry but there in the middle of it all was that evergreen tree and I thought, you know, in a world that's dead and dying, God has put the church here, and God has put his people here to be that light into the world, that everything else might be gloom and doom, but we as Christians should ever be green. And I hope and pray that we all kind of gauge our life right now and say when people encounter us, is it green or is it that dead and dry look that we got and you know you can encounter people that buddy I'm telling you what as soon as you see them you think ooh they're <laughs> it's going to be dry you know but then again you can encounter some people and when you see them you know that there is a joy about them that there's some kind of happiness about them and, and you know it's so sad that, that we look at people and we think well it shouldn't we as Christians should be maintaining that walk with the Lord say amen and if you look at this portion of scripture in Jeremiah I want to share with you today, it said, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, the foundation of it all, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters 
that spreadeth out his roots by the river, and shall not be seen when the heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall it cease from yielding fruit. My goodness, what an example of a Christian should be. And it all starts out with our trust, our hope, being in the Lord. And the Bible tells us we need to be rooted and grounded in Him, in the faith, in the Word. And if we are, I believe this with all my heart, that there, we should be maintaining our Christianity through the good times, yes, through the bad times. When people encounter us, they ought to see a consistency in our life. Say amen. Now, you know, a lot of us raised just like I was around a group of people that I'm telling you what, when they was high on Jesus, they was high on Jesus, okay? I was raised in one of them churches. It wasn't much to see somebody run up and down the aisle, you know? I mean, just get after it. And, you know, I always thought, boy, I, I like excitement in serving Jesus, amen? And, you know, some people will even accuse me of, of being getting too emotional. There's too much emotional in, in what you do. I'll tell you what, you ain't never done anything in your life that meant to, something to you that emotion wasn't a part of it, Amen? And I'll tell you what, you can yell and scream at the football games if you want to, and I'm just going to be honest with you, there's nothing excites me more than serving Jesus. Amen? There's nothing that I get more emotional about, and brother, I'm telling you, get excited about, than, than, than telling the good news of the Lord. Put our trust, our hope in the Lord, and he said if we will, that we will be like that tree handed by the river and you know the thing that stands out there it said it's not in the heat it doesn't work if it gets hot i tell you what sometimes in this life it can get heated up amen sometimes in our relationship let's just say where it is sometimes in marriage life it can get hot huh I mean, there's things that, and even when the drought comes, when, when, when it's kind of hard, I'm going to tell you what, we as Christians still have a reason to rejoice. You know, we come through the COVID, and I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people, this gloom and doom is going to be the end of it all. I'll tell you what, God kept us, didn't he? Amen. And you know, you can sit there and say, well, preacher, not everybody made it through. Well, let me tell you what, if they know Jesus, they made it through. Amen. You see, so many times, we and I think about the three funerals we've had of late here in the church, and I'll tell you what, for each one of those people, that wasn't the end. It was just the beginning, amen? They received their ultimate healing. They're forever with the Lord, and that should be reason for us to just rejoice in the fact that God blessed our life with those people for just a season. But it's still a reason to go green, amen? Every day of our life, go green. You know, as Paul was instructing young Timothy on how to be a preacher and what it took and to do what God had him do, 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter and the second verse, he had these words for him. He said, preach the word. Do what God's called you to do. And let me say this to you today. If you're a born-again child of God, then God has called you into the ministry. Okay? Now, it might not be to get up here and yell and scream and spit on people. Okay? Can't all do that. We all got our... I, I laughed when, you know, when Roger went by and borrowed John's glasses. I thought, isn't that something? We'd just get along. Now, you ought to see him at lunchtime switching out teeth. But anyway, <laughs> now, <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> John still got all his no <laughs> anyway <laughs> sorry Roger but you know I'll tell you what when he said just you know preach the gospel be true to you Colin no matter what it takes how hard it is do it but then this is a fact here that I want he said be instant in season and out of season be instant in season out of season and, and, you know, my remark about, you know, they switched off glasses. You never, it wasn't no big deal. Brother, even though one of them, whoever it was, forgot their glasses, they still done what was before them to do. Sometimes it's not a, you know, I remember as a young man starting to preach the gospel, the church we were in, there were seven churches that had a fellowship. And once a month they had what they called a youth service. And we'd all get together. And, and the way they do that, all the preachers go in, sit down, and, They'd sing a song or two, and then they'd have all the preachers in the house stand up. 
And then they had this little b committee board, something. We'd go out and in the parking lot and pray. And when they'd come back in, they'd walk by whoever was supposed to preach at night, and they'd just tap you on the shoulder. Well, you know, 14 years old, I'm telling you what, that's uncomfortable. I told one of them one night, I said, do y'all really go out there and pray? You go out and smoke a cigarette, huh? <laughs> you know, somebody, even back then I wasn't too popular, you know. <laughs> but in, in here I might have said, <laughs> did you go out there and pray or get a dip? But anyway, that's, that's somewhere I don't need to go. Woo! Don't look up right now. But, but you know the thing about it was, is you know to me that's what the Bible's saying, be instant in season, out of season. Always be ready. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There wasn't a time one at one of those meetings that God already hadn't let me know, okay? And, I, and it's been that I thank God that, that he'll prepare you and he gives you the word whether you know it's you're going to be your time or not. When the calling comes, instant, in season, out of season, even when it's not convenient, you need to give glory to the Lord, amen? Again, we need to go green as Christians. Even when, it, even when you're having a bad day, even when things are not going good, instant, in season, out of season, when it's easy, when it's good to be kind to somebody, be kind to them. When it's hard to be kind to some people, you know what? If you're really going green, you're going to be kind. You're going to have a, a word from the Lord. Be instant, in season, out of season. Always ready to give account for the Lord. And you know, I think about all the good things that we as Christians have and how much God has blessed us. And, and just like this time of year, starting off the Christmas season. And you know, when I hear people saying, I catch myself every once in a while when you say the holidays. I'm telling you what, it means something more to me than just holidays. Amen. When I see all this, when we do all this, brother, it just points to one thing, and that's the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And somebody can say, oh, well, that's not the time he was really born. Look, you can get off on anything you want to. What matters is that we set aside a time to say, thank you, Lord, for sending a Savior into a world. And through him, I'm rooted, huh? Even when the heat, heat days is here, even when the drought days is here, it's not always. I'll tell you what, I know I probably make this look so easy. <laughs> you know, some days I get up, whoo, huh? But you know, even the days, and, and I've had a few where I think, well, I should have got somebody else to preach today. But you know what? I know this, that if I just step out on faith, it's not me that's got to do it anyway. It's God. You know, if Steve had to do this, I'll tell you, oh, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> you can amen, it ain't going to hurt my feelings. And you know, through all the years of ministry and being somewhere, actually the first church we ever pastored, I went that first Sunday morning there, and, and there was another friend of mine asked me to come because he was supposed to preach that morning at this little old church. Got there and he didn't show up. Me and Donna, then we only had two little kids. And you know, they said, ask if we played the piano. Well, Donna played, they didn't even have a piano player. She played, and one of the older guys sung a song, led the service. Well, there's a couple other guys there in, in suits, and so I thought, mm, one of them's a preacher, you know. I mean, 21 years old, I'm just sitting over there enjoying life, taking care of the kids while Donna's playing the piano. You thump them kids, they don't know. Anyway... You know, it comes time for the preaching. He said, well, thank God he supplied us with a preacher this morning. And I'm like, yeah, these old fellas going to preach. He talked a little bit, and he said, you ready? He pointed at me, and I thought, are you a nut? <laughs> Didn't know it at the time, but he's a deacon. But anyway, <laughs> I might not be here next Sunday. But anyway, you know, I said, me, you know? But you know it's just like that. I mean, God always takes care of us. If you're willing to step out on faith for the Lord, God's always going to give you what you need. If you're really rooted in and built into the love of God, God's going to prosper you. And you know, I got up that morning, God blessed, and there wasn't very many people in there. And you know, as soon as service is over, they said, hey, will you come back and preach next Sunday? And I said, no, I, I've already got a job. 
you know, we associate pastor of the church we grew up in and, and doing good, you know, just happy as a lark. But you know that wasn't what God wanted. And God wants something for each and every one of us, but we got to be willing to know this, that if we just stay green for Jesus, he's going to use us. And, you know, I look back at all that, and I think, you know, some people's going to say, well, buddy, that was a lucky deal. No luck involved. If you're tapped into Jesus, I'm telling you what, he's going to take care of your life. Now, don't. I've already told you, and I want to remind you this, don't think I'm just standing up here saying, oh, yeah, you get saved, get right with Jesus. It's all roses, never another problem. Because I'm going to tell you, I done told you in the start it all that, brother, sometimes there's a heat of the day, sometimes there's a drought. But I'm going to tell you this, evergreen for Jesus. No matter what it is, we ought to be able to have a smile on our lips. We ought to be able to get excited about the fact that my Redeemer liveth. And I believe this is all my heart. I don't care who you are. You can be mad. Donna can attest to this. You can be upset, just angry. If you give me a few minutes, I'll make you laugh. Sometimes it makes her even angrier. <laughs> but she's still laughing. Sometimes she won't look at me because she's smiling, you know. But I'm going to tell you what, to me... That's what the joy of the Lord's all about. I want you to know this today in this Christmas season. We, we, we quoted it a while ago. For God so loved me and you. Me and you. That he sent his son into this world. On that first Christmas morning. As he laid there in that manger. And God already knew. Redeemer of the world. You see, the light came on. The stars shined in the east. And now that light is passed on to each and every one of us. And if we'll stay green, if we'll let people know, and I know, I know during the holiday season, oh, it, there's things can, can try your patience. Huh? The traffic. I tried to run in the store the other day. I just needed one item. Know what I need. I don't have to take me a long time to get in there and get out. Run in there, got what I need, and run back up, and there's the lines. And, you know, I looked, and I thought, this line right here is moving the fastest. Huh? You know, I don't know how it is, but I always get in the slowest line. <laughs> you know, and I, you know, I, it's hard staying green sometimes, huh? You know, you stand there all that time, and finally you get, get there. There's one person in front of you, and you think, yeah, I've done good. I stood in here. I've read the National Enquirer. I know what all the other people's reading now. <laughs> Boy, they some crazy stuff, some of them magazines, ain't they? And you think, but I've made it. I've stayed green. She grabs that deal, sounds like us on Sunday morning. <laughs> Can I get a price check? <laughs> you know. Then's when you know if your face real or not, huh? <laughs> Even in those situations, we should stay green for Jesus. They should see the light twinkling in our eye because there's something beyond the drought of this world. There's something beyond the conflict that's going on. There's something beyond that everybody wants to put on Facebook. There's something beyond what everybody wants to talk about and what everybody wants to gloom and doom about. And that something is a little bitty baby born in Bethlehem that we ought to be hooked into, that ought to make us just as excited. Now, I don't know how you were, but you know on Christmas Eve when I was a little bitty child, yeah, I still kind of this way. Man, there's times I couldn't hardly sleep because I just, I, you know, we didn't get a whole lot growing up, but you're going to get something, you know. Man, you just couldn't wait, the, the thrill. And, and my dad had this tradition, I carried it on too. You know, when he'd get up and it was time to get up, we had this old cowbell, huh? And dad would ring that bell and he'd yell, ho, 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 and slam the front door. Man, I'm telling you what, out of that bed you'd shoot. And I mean, you knew old Santa Claus had been there. Huh? I've done that with my kids. 
you know, I think they kind of do it with their kids. They'll count all the traditions of that. But you know the one tradition that I passed on that means the world to me? And I tell it every year. <laughs> now it's just me and Donna and a dog. <laughs> and another dog. Now, they ain't in the house. I mean, there's been times. But anyway, <laughs> different message. But you know, we still join hands, just me and her, not the dog, just me and her. Before we do anything, before we eat, before we open a present, we still do stockings. <laughs> Don't care. But we join hands. We did this with our kids. Our kids do it with their kids. We get around that Christmas tree. And we sing happy birthday to Jesus because he is the reason for the season. And if you'll look into that, you'll forever be good. As you stand with us this morning, will you take those thoughts and just use them this year? Stay green no matter what's going on. Stay hooked up with Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word. And I thank you, dear God, for helping us to know, dear Lord, that, that if we'll be instant in season, out of season, that you're going to bless us. And if you bless us, that that means everybody that we come in contact with is going to share that blessing. I pray, dear God, for each one of us is here that we truly this year might be ever mindful of what Christmas is all about the birth of our Lord and Savior, and that it might help us, dear God, to maintain our relationship with you. We thank you for your visitation here in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we dismiss this morning, you ain't going nowhere yet. I, there's a bunch of announcements, and I keep losing my, my uh, bulletin. So I'm just going to do it. First of all, don't forget the 9th and 10th is Christmas here at the church, and uh, we'll be doing dress rehearsal on a Wednesday night before. And then on Thursday night, it'll be the Christmas parade at Bristow. The cast will be on a trailer and uh, be going through. And the Carolyn, they will go through the Christmas uh, parade at Bristow. And we'll have banners on the wagon talking about Crunch or Christmas. So everybody be much mindful of that. There's a sign-up list on the bulletin board. We need you to sign up, put your telephone number on there. Cassie Kenosha will be calling you telling you where you needed this year for country Christmas. We learned a lot of people through here that two nights telling the Christmas story. It's a blessing, a tremendous outreach for the church, so please get involved in that. Tonight at 5 o'clock, the ladies will be doing their craft night, Christmas craft night, 5 o'clock tonight. Everything's provided. doesn't cost you anything. All the materials will be here for you, and the food will be provided. You don't even have to bring that. All you ladies just come out 5 o'clock tonight. But we do ask if you will sign up on that list on the bulletin board so they'll approximately know how many people going to be here. But everything is provided 5 o'clock tonight. Ladies, come out, have a good time of fellowship, make a craft, and sign up if you want to be a part of the drawing for the Secret Santa. <sighs> there's, a, uh, there's a paper on the table out there. Man, we just sign up on everything around here, but fill it out. If something, if you want to be a part and you're not going to be here tonight, make sure you fill that out and give it to Donna so they'll include you on the drawing. So remember that uh, coming up. And the Christmas program, to practice on Wednesday night, that's first through fifth grade. So have your kids out here on Wednesday night to practice for that. And the uh, program will be the 17th that morning. So remember that uh, when you when you making your calendar plans for this coming a holiday season. Anything else? Baptism is this Wednesday night or a week from Wednesday night? This Wednesday night, going to have a teen baptism out in the other building. Come out and support the teens. They've got a lot to be baptized, and we're proud of that. In, huh? Six thirty for the baptism Wednesday night. Anything else that I covered off? Yes. For country Christmas, flyers out there on the table, do that and uh, help spread the word. Anything else? If not, then if you would, bow your heads with us and we'll look to the Lord and be dismissed. Brother Raymond, if you would.